Hi, my name is Joe, and you can usually find me on the Cointelegraph news team. My guest today is Christophe de Bucalaire, a Brussels deputy and European official. So why are we talking to a Brussels politician? Well, because he's the first Belgian member of parliament and the first European politician to take his entire 2022 salary in Bitcoin. It's quite simple. He gets paid and he puts it straight into BTC. That's a monthly salary of roughly 5,500 euros that gets converted to Satoshis every single month. It's a bold move from a politician working in a conservative arena, but Christophe has his motives, notably raising financial awareness, contributing to financial education in the country as well as in broader Europe, and of course sending out such a message that maybe, just maybe, Bitcoin is a safe place to put your money. Christophe, bonjour. How are you doing today? Bonjour. Hi. I'm fine, thanks. That last month you decided to take your, uh, you would take the entire salary for 2022 in Bitcoin. Um, given, as you say, that it is such a, uh, a long-term trend, it's almost this bigger picture thing going on here. Um, what made you decide to take your salary in Bitcoin now? Uh, there is a real strategy. Uh, from Asia and in the US, they are busy too on, on those mm -hmm. topics, very uh, a lot far further than us. Um, and I was thinking, okay, there is now the world is going straight forward, and Europe is thinking about what would be interesting or not. And in Belgium, we had the, the first hearings in the parliament. Uh, they are now um, making hearings to inform us for the first time about what are cryptocurrencies. Um, so there is a, a big problem. And I, told, I, I thought, okay, if we let things go like this, we will never, uh, Europe will never have something to say in this. Um, and yeah, the, uh, once again, in the financial world, it will be Asia and the US that decide everything. So uh, I, I thought, okay, I have to do something to raise awareness much more than it's, uh, it's going on now. And that's why I, uh, I thought, okay, maybe if I take all my, my salary for whole year, and I put all my credibility in this topic um, in, the, in the press, in the media, it can help. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why I, I made this announcement, yeah. You know, the digital yuan on one side and America on the other, which is, you know, today is the launch of the Bitcoin mining ETF, for example. And then, you know, El Salvador, which is um, has their El Chivo wallet on which they're giving out these $30. Um, so it's important that, yeah, Europe plays this role. Um, I mean, can we go a bit deeper there? What kind of message are you trying to send out to the wider public by being paid in Bitcoin? My real political uh, uh, statement is that we have to abolish the last privilege of the rich is mm -hmm. the financial ignorance. So for the moment, we have a financial system that benefits to, uh, for a big, big part to small amount of people. And the large, uh, the largest part of the people don't uh, benefit from uh, from from that from the uh, financial market. So um, we have to ask the question why. Um, first thing, of course, is the financial ignorance. So we have to address that. Uh, we have to have uh, concrete financial courses in school at school uh, to learn uh, people to to put all people on an equal level. Um, uh, in front of the financial market. The financial market is very positive, like, like it's organized now, centralized, because it brings a lot of stability. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing. But there is all, also drawbacks, like um, uh, yeah, inequalities. Um, uh, you, you, you see now inflation is, uh, is coming, you know. Yep. Uh, there are some crises, you know, uh, in 2008, uh, the financial crisis and things like that. So uh, maybe, and it's not very transparent, you know, um, the bank's costs uh, it's a, it are big costs also for the people, mm -hmm. um, not very accessible. Huh? Two, two billion people are not, uh, don't have a bank account in, in the world. So I think we have to improve the system. And how we can, can we improve the system? I think Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are a way to improve the actual system. So uh, because uh, they have uh, some very good advantages, uh, those cryptocurrencies, very transparent, the same rules for everybody, uh, completely decentralized, so no, nobody can uh, cheat 
Um, and so if you take those two systems, um, and that's my vision, if those two systems are working together, maybe we can have like a monetary power like we have now. I know that Michael Saylor, for example, is a big prop- proponent for Bitcoin being this, you know, global reserve currency and then dollars working on top of it. So, yeah, it's uh, but but just you make the distinction between Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, which is also an, a growing trend. Um, so why for you, Christophe, is it why is it Bitcoin and why is it not Ethereum or Solana or any other cryptocurrency? What I see is that Bitcoin is the oldest, uh, the most stable protocol, the maybe the only one who is really, really decentralized completely without control of any um, of any yeah, central structure um, mm-hmm. with a proof of work, which is uh, uh, have some issues with energy, but which brings a lot of security and a lot mm-hmm. of stability. Um, mm-hmm. And so for the moment, I'm thinking maybe Bitcoin is the... Um, the most stable thing uh, where we have to work with. But I know it's, uh, I, as I told you, it's not a very strong position. I'm, I'm very open to change that position and to learn about that. Um, but why I did the announcement with Bitcoin is also because um, I think it's the most, everybody knows it. Um, yeah. And it's, the most accessible of a very inaccessible world for the moment for the normal people. What about your your colleagues? That must must uh, call for some interesting discussions at the the water cooler or at the coffee table. Um, it's, to what extent have you received, say, support or I'm going to guess here criticism from your colleagues about your decision to to swap your entire salary for Bitcoin? Um, to be honest, I, I'm not sure people uh, and also in my colleagues, um, only very few understand that we're touching there something uh, very important. And, you know, uh, that we're touching, uh, that we're talking about monetary system, that we're uh, talking about, yes, things that, yeah, we talk about money. Money is the blood of the economy, you know, it's, it's so important. Um, and when we talk about Bitcoin, I don't, I'm, I don't think there are a lot that understand that we're talking about that. So there are more, uh, some say to me, ah, that's a good uh, mediatic. Uh, <laughs> you know? Yeah, media move. Yeah, yeah, sure. But the most of the people uh, are, are criticizing me. Really, uh, it's uh, they, they say I'm crazy. They say I give the bad example. They say uh, uh, because of the climate impact of uh, um, of of, crypt- of Bitcoin, it's a very we have to stop that. Uh, they say it, it's to finance terrorism and all the you know other legends we hear. <laughs> mm. we do. Yeah, yeah. So um, for the moment, it's more uh, negative reactions. Okay, um, but I hope. Uh, yeah, when negative reactions on Twitter and things like that, but I think it makes them uh, like like we said in the beginning. Okay, Christophe mm. is someone is not crazy. If he says that, maybe there is something behind. And I I mm. hope some will uh, will follow that path. You know. Just yesterday we saw that KPMG in Canada has announced that it's bought some Bitcoin to put on its balance sheet. So I think you know the wheels are in motion and some of these dominoes are starting to fall. Um, has there been any temptation? Has anyone come up to you and said, hey, Christoph, you know, how do I work out this wallet? <laughs> <laughs> no, what, what I have is some uh, some colleagues that criticize me in public, you know, but in private, they tell me, yeah, but uh, you have to know, I already tried also my, <laughs> my daughter or my son uh, is, is teaching me how to invest, but I don't believe in the technology, but I'm going to invest because there's there is some money to do, you know. So they're not ready to assume uh, mm-hmm. their position. <laughs> But you see, they're, they're beginning to, to think about. And just to go back to um, what you were saying earlier about these two separate systems, um, you know, that this counter system that's fighting, the well, not fighting, but maybe promoting innovation within the existing system. Um, what does that mean? Or what is your vision for, for crypto in this sort of light? Um, what can the two worlds bring to, you know, how can they combine to work towards a better world and a better monetary system? I think we, we have to look to gold, you know. Uh, when there are crises, we, we understand gold can be uh, a way to protect ourselves about mm-hmm. uh, 
uh, against the fluctuation of money or against the, uh, when there are big problems, everybody says, okay, we go back to gold. Um, and Bitcoin is a little bit the numerical gold, you know? So um, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know yet exactly how it will, or how it all will work together, but okay. I feel there is something interesting there. With the digital world, the currencies and assets can become very, very, the, the limit is, is, is because in the, in the beginning you say, yeah, uh, currencies, you have to exchange it rapidly. And so with gold, it was more difficult. And with a, mm. a property a document of a house, it's difficult too, you know, you cannot mm. use it like, uh, like currencies. But with Bitcoin, it's in the middle of the two. You, you don't know really, is it an asset or a, a, a currency? So that's why all economists are debating on, the, on, the, on that question. <laughs> And we, we, we speak about Bitcoin and say, oh, but it's not a currency. Uh, okay, maybe not, maybe well, but what, what does it change? <laughs> and so I yeah. think it's a new, it's really a new way of thinking. It's a new, um, and, and there, there is still a lot of to being learned in that. So, yeah, I, I have a vision of collaborating. That's true, that's for sure. I have a vision of more uh, accessible, uh, access to, to finance, more transparency. Um, and I think... It's uh, different from the vision of uh, China, who wants to use uh, uh, the numeric, U the digital yuan. Is there anything else that we haven't covered that you might like to add towards the end of the video? I've just got one final quick question. Maybe just a message to give to to people who are following us, because uh, I think uh, people who are looking to to this, they are all and who are following you are people who are very uh, are entrepreneurs, investors who all already know a lot about, about blockchain and Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. And I really want to pass that message that we have to uh, don't be um, uh, aggressive against the, <laughs> the traditional financial world. Uh, hmm. That's not the way we will we will uh, will make steps forward. Uh, we have to enter that vision of collaboration. Um, people who are in uh, traditional banks, political leaders, they also have other constraints. You know, they have to uh, protect their population. They have to uh, be sure the population will not, the citizen will not uh, be uh, uh, have problems when they invest, and the, the, because there is less less of security in the in the crypto world. So it's normal they want to have some uh, restrictive legislation, and so you have to go and. Explain you have to go and try to collaborate with those people to convince them to explain them uh, but not to treat them like people who uh, understand nothing and then and be uh, like you know uh, people of the uh, um, 18th century no they're they, they have their constraints so it's important we now we enter in a, a collaborative moment and not a, a fighting moment because otherwise we will have more and more um, a delay uh, in uh, in yeah beginning really implementing new uh, projects with crypto. As you said at the start, you know we need to make sure help people along that journey and to understand and as you did, take the time to to learn about Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrencies. Um, that's brilliant. Um, Bitcoin price prediction for 2022, Christoph. Last question. Are we going to see 100,000 euros, 200,000 euros? <laughs> 2022 um yeah no I, I think it will it will take uh, some more time than we think so um i think that if we if we stabilize uh, uh around the 100,000 i think it will be already a, a incredible performance yeah fantastic that was great thank you so much christoph um best of luck to you in the future and uh yeah invitation. cheers bye bye ciao bye Thank you.